Thank you so much to our viewers who get in touch about stories that we should cover here on Serious Country. And the the recent one was sent in to me via Facebook from Chris Orange. And uh, he was outraged about a recent proposal by the Timaru District Council seeking to increase the size of the setbacks from the roads, boundaries and neighbouring houses for dairy sheds, stockyards and intensively farmed animals in its draft district plan. The draft, as it said, has just finished its first public consultation and as you can imagine many farmers are a bit frustrated. Uh, I'm sure at that consultation was our next guest Jason Grant, South Canterbury President for Federated Farmers. Uh, Jason you've had a recent meeting with the council, have you told them that they're bonkers? Are they listening? Oh not quite, no, uh, thanks for having me on tonight too Sarah, that's really good. No, uh, no there's definitely a few issues around this draft plan coming out um, we, uh, I think that it is truly a draft plan, so these rules aren't set in stone. Uh, there were some real major concerns around the setbacks. So one of the rules especially uh, was calling for setbacks of 100 metres from boundaries and about 400 metres from residential houses for intensively farmed stock. Now, intensively farmed stock, under the clarification, is anything that's being brake fenced or um, eating irrigated pasture. So that would mean any, any, any animals any dairy farms or any animals in, in, that, um, in that class would have to be 100 metres back from the boundary. So straight away there was a, it was just a, there was a real error in, the, in that rule and, and we have had assurances that that rule will definitely be thrown out. Uh, it was just a bit of a mistake. Uh, some of the other setbacks really caused a bit of a, caused a, bit of a, um, a concern and I think it wasn't really clear in the draft plan that a lot of the stuff was only was only going forward, so it wasn't retrospective. So anyone's existing ponds or existing um, um, ponds or you know effluent ponds or or dairy sheds wouldn't come under this new rule. So that wasn't that clear in the in the first place, and I think that's what got got the back up of a lot of farmers. We've had a since this came out, Federal Farmers had a meeting and we've consulted with uh, had, had a meeting with the Timber District Council planners. And um, yeah, we've, we've had some pretty good dialogue and we've been given pretty good assurances that uh, some of the really curly rules in this draft plan, um, we should see some easement on it. Uh, yeah, so we should be okay. It's an interesting one though, isn't it? Because I'm sitting there thinking about the extremely wonderful fertile soil around the towns of the likes of Timaru and Omaru. And I mean, you can have that same argument about the expansion of rural you know of urban sprawl onto some of these wonderful soils as well um who you know is it majority rules here in terms of who wants to live next to what well i think if you put a house and and um and there's something that is already a pond or a dairy shed existing that's uh, that's that's not going to be yeah you know, that's going to be your problem so i know i can understand that um it is something that we're working through, and I know there's some real concerns there, um, but I think we'll end up with, a, with something. I mean, if anything that's come out of this is that there's been a lot of publicity, so we're going to end up with some rules that are very well consulted. Um, we have been given assurances that our feedback will be listened to. There's this one thing that, that really came out of this as well that it just showed how, how very on edge our rural communities mm-hmm. are around new rules, and it sort of leads back to to last year when we, we had the consultation period for the essential fresh water came out. Um, and we were told back then that we were going to be listened to and put in, put in your feedback and put in your um, submissions. And uh, I think, you know, we were told we'd, we'd end up with rules that would drop out the bottom that were, were really good. And uh, I think everyone realises uh, we didn't quite end up get what we were promised. Well, end up with what we were promised. So that is where, you know, this the rural community is right on edge and, and I think we're in a, dealing with a different beast here. You know, the, the whole the scenario is different to what we had with had with the essential fresh water package. But uh, there are some major concerns out there for the well-being of rural community, you know, rural, rural families. I mean, there's a lot of stress out there, and it doesn't take very much to set people off. And this has been a really prime example of that. Mm. Um, we've just had a point come in here from a viewer. The fire risk alone makes this sound ridiculous because, I mean, what's the profitability of non-intensive in some of those certain areas for other types of uh, less intensive land uses in that type of country? Yeah, no, no it just it was. I think it was definitely a mistake that one. It was. It is completely impractical. And I, I remember when I heard first heard the rule, I just 
thought to myself, well, that, that must just be a mistake, and, and I think we were pretty right. And you we spat your coffee shit. out, Jason. <laughs> Sorry? You spat your coffee yes. out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it was – yeah, it was. It was just, yeah, it just didn't didn't make sense. So I just thought to myself, and I mean, it's always the thing, I, you know, rules that are completely ridiculous and don't make sense don't seem to worry me as much as ones that are, that are tight and uh, you can just do because those are the ones that often cause the problems. And just in terms of the makeup of the T- Timaru District Council and rural governance and representation in general, like yourself, um, putting you know being the president for South Canterbury Federated Farmers, is it is it a problem there whereby there's not enough rural representation within a district council to understand um, that these rules are ridiculous before going to media about them? Oh, it's, I don't think there's too many problems. We've actually got a pretty good relationship with the Timber District Council. Just today, I actually went and presented to one of the council meetings around what Federated Farmers does. So we have got a good dialogue there. I just think that this was this was just brought out and, and, and it really was a draft plan. It's not even the proposed plan. We've still got yet to go to that. So after this consultation, and, and I'm saying in the, in the, the, the consultation period and, and for feedback, has been extended to the 31st of December to give an extra month to get people you know, able to put their feedback in. And then we've got six months, roughly six months, before we get into the proposed plan, which is going to be drawn up, and there'll be formal submissions at that period. So we have got a fair bit of time to time, iron this out and get some rules that uh, that we can all work with. Uh, and it really, that, that is the important part. I mean, it's, it's really highlighted in, in some of the things that we're dealing with in farming at the moment. That uh, you know, if you develop rules in isolation of people that are, the rules are ultimately going to affect, you end up with rules that don't work, and you end up with silly rules, basically. So you have to have everyone involved, thrash them out, and and in, in this case, that probably should have happened. They should have been consulted on before they were let public, and it would have caused a lot less uh, you know, angst, angst, angst around the community. But I mean, it's happened, and um, we are where we are now. But so I think in the future we probably won't see anything come like, like this come out of the Timber District Council. That's Hopefully good. not for a while anyway. Yeah, that's good. Jason Grant's got anything to do with it. Um, that's absolutely fabulous. Before I let you go, Jason, uh, I haven't asked this of our last key, so I'll mix it up a little bit. If you were, if they say, for instance, we were to go into lockdown, and blend touch wood, that we won't. Um, as Chris Hipkins said, it'll be wherever you're based at, at a summer holiday location. Where would your ideal place to go oh sorry i've got to stay here now and not be too bad worried about it i would probably be at home actually <laughs> just get a lot done <laughs> on the, i'm on the farm i don't quite live on the farm at the moment but it wouldn't be too far from the farm yeah um you know and uh, i think there'd be plenty to do uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be stuck in a campground. No, you're dead wrong. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. No. At home near a lake. Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah, near a lake. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much, South Canterbury Federated Farmers President Jason Grant, joining us there. This is Sarah's Country.